I'm a professor of biology at Stanford University, and I've been working for the last 30 years on understanding the process of protein folding, and in particular, the consequences of what happens when proteins don't fold correctly or get damaged. In the case of DNA, when mistakes are made, the DNA gets repaired. It, usually there are many mechanisms to fix the DNA by removing the wrong nucleotides and putting in new ones. In the case of protein synthesis, there are no such mechanisms to repair proteins. Once the protein is made incorrectly, it is uh, made incorrectly and then it has a very high risk of folding into a conformation that isn't normal. So, in a sense, the problem that we mostly are concerned with is mistakes that are made during the pro process of protein synthesis. Sometimes these mistakes are determined by the genetics. If you inherit a mutation in a particular gene that affects the folding of the protein, then it will never fold. Sometimes the mistakes simply delay the time it takes for folding the protein. And the cell has to make a decision to continue to try to fold the protein or destroy it. The consequence of failing to destroy it is usually that the protein aggregates. And when it aggregates, it forms very specific types of self associations that form often insoluble products that are somehow associated with bad things. <laughs> the bad things can include dysfunction of the cell, um, damage to cellular organelles, damage to various processes in the cell, and ultimately can lead to cell death. So we study many different genetic models of diseases that affect protein folding, and uh, some very well-established models are Huntington's disease or the polyglutamine diseases, which my lab has worked on quite extensively because there we know exactly how the mutation that causes the disease relates to the ability of the protein to adopt unusual conformations that are highly aggregated and are very strongly associated with the disease pathology. These kinds of lesions can be seen in every neurodegenerative disease model. However, whether they are really, to what extent they're really all the same, and the underlying cellular and genetic processes are the same is still not clear. And the relationship between the formation of these aggregates and the pathology is not so clear. So I think superficially, yes, it seems to be a perhaps universal problem in neurodegenerative diseases, but mechanistically, it probably is naive to think that they are really all working by the same mechanism.